Hi everyone, it is Atia here at Booking It with Atia, and today we're going to get into my March reading recap. So if you did not see my February reading recap, I'll give you a brief overview of what this is and how it's different from my weekly wrap-ups. So I'm not going to be talking about specific books and my thoughts about specific books. This is more for like the people who love stats and data and just seeing a complete overview of how my month went and just be sure to check out my weekly wrap-ups and be on the lookout for different vlog projects for my thoughts on specific books. So we're going to start out with the March hopefuls slash TBR check-in, right? So me going through the books that I said that I was interested in in the month of March and whether or not I read them and currently reading them, DNF them, or they're going to be rolling over. So in terms of Advika and the Hollywood Wives, did not read, Blood Over Bright Haven, The Color Purple, and The Hundred Years War on Palestine. I am currently reading A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, Fathom Folk, as well as Deep as the Sky, Red as the Sea are all books that I still really want to read fairly soon. So I am just like rolling them over into April. And then, oh, and the same goes for Jade City. That's also going to roll over into April. And then I read, I finished See No Color, and I did not pick up Girl, Woman, Other, Homeward, or Eloquent Rage. So we have a little bit of a mixed bag there, which is fine. In terms of rollovers, or not, not rollovers, I, I want a different word for that, but these are books that I started in March that, you know, the end of the month came and I did not finish them. So they are going to be following me into April. So it's going to be Akata Warrior by Nettie Okorafor, A Woman Is No Man by Itaf Rum, Squire by Nadia Shamaz and Sarah Alfege, Love Notes by Christina C. Jones, Technically Yours by Denise Williams and Promise by Rachel Eliza Griffiths. And then in terms of highlights, I just wanted to share my favorite novels slash novellas for the month. My top, I did top six again. Um, and so we have A Drop of Venom by Sajani Patel. Excellent. Well, obviously because it's one of my favorites. Static Up All Night, which is a YA graphic novel. Finally Heard by Kelly Yang, which is a middle grade contemporary. Luca by Gray Huffington, which is a contemporary urban romance, contemporary urban black romance. The American Daughters by Maurice Carlos Ruffin, as well as Ghost Rose by Shawnee Gibbs and Shawnell Gibbs. And then my I've just been inhaling picture books, so I picked my favorite six. We have Fighting for Love, Courage to Dream, Unstoppable, How Bayard Rustin Organized the 1963 March on Washington, Show Way, Love is Loud, and I Lived Inside a Whale. And in terms of disappointments versus surprises, I had two disappointments this month. That would be The Garden by Tomi Adeyemi, which is a Amazon original short story. And then The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Call, which is a novella. And for surprises, I have three and they are Ghost Roast, Fires to Come by Asha Lemmy, which is another Amazon original short story, and The American Daughters. Then in terms of my manga journey, I finished one series unexpectedly. I did not realize that it was coming to an end, but I finished Imakoi, Now I'm in Love. I continued on in eight series, Platinum End, Witch Hat Atelier, the Ancient Magus's Bride, Asadora, Our Dreams at Dusk, Flying Witch, Akane Banashi, and The Apothecary Diaries. And I started three manga slash manhwa series. I, well, this is, I restarted Noragami Stray God. I started The Abandoned Empress, 
the remarried empress as well as she loves to cook and she loves to eat now for the stats in terms of numbers i read a total of 90 books this breaks down to nine novels 10 novellas slash novelettes 36 picture books two graphic novels and 33 manga and in terms of genres now i do want to mention again that this genre breakdown does not include the picture books that i read so this is everything minus picture books so we have 41 percent fantasy 8% science fiction, 22% contemporary, 2% mystery thriller, 6% horror paranormal, 8% historical fiction, and 12% contemporary slash suspense romance. My average star rating was 4.38 stars and the format breakdown, so physical versus ebook versus audiobook, 67 of the books were physical books, 3 were audiobooks, and 20 were ebooks. 14 of the books had queer representation. All of the books were by BIPOC and about BIPOC. 24 books were 2024 releases or ARCs, which was that absolutely blew my mind because I did not realize how many 2024 releases I had read in the month of March until I went to gather my notes or gather the information for my notes and I realized just how many new releases I had read. And in terms of books for my physical backlist TBR, so this is books that I owned prior to the beginning of the year. Zero. Zero, which is so bad. So I am making a conscious, concerted effort in April, May, and June. Yes, I have planned my hopefuls list that far in advance to pull more from my shelves. I have, yo, I have over a thousand books probably close to 1500 because when we talk about novels and novellas alone I'm close to a thousand I'm I have I digitally catalog my collection and the novels and novellas is up to a thousand and that's not including poetry that's not including graphic novels comics manga picture books non-fiction right so a good amount of that you know, let's put it at a conservative guesstimate at 1300. A good amount of this 1300 is unread. So I need to be more pragmatic about pulling from my own library, as well as, you know, treating myself now and then and utilizing my local library. But the fact that I read zero books from my physical backlist TBR in the month of March was absolutely, what well, is absolutely disgusting to me at least. So in terms of age category, 37 of the books were picture books or middle grade, 36 were young adult, and 16 were adult. And that rounds out to a total of 9,929 pages and 18.05 hours, which is pretty spectacular so now we're going to jump into my april hopefuls like what i have my eye on and this list is long i'm not even going to sit here and be like ah, like this is a long list and when i was making it i was like this is a long list so the way that i split this up is i have a priority section and then i have a if i get to it i get to it so i'm going to be focusing on the priority section i'll show you all the books like I'll show you physically my priority stack and then on the screen after I do that I'll tell you or show you what the if I get to it I get to it list is and then I'm also participating in or want to participate in you know what I'm going to put it out there I am participating in some readathon slash challenges so we have the 30 and 30 manga readathon where you read 30 volumes of manga in 30 days so you know averages out to be a volume a day and I will if I remember and I hope I do I will put Ashley from Bookish Realms well actually it's her Realm of Comics channel her announcement video so you can check that out it's also National Poetry Month and I want to get back into reading poetry so my goal for the month of April is to read at least four 
collections of poetry so if I stick to like one a week I should be good. I am not going to share the stack of poetry books that I will be pulling from on my channel but make sure to check out my Instagram and my TikTok because I will be sharing my National Poetry Month hopefuls on those two platforms. And then there's also the picture book readathon, which I am deeply intrigued about and I want to, you know, further look into and hopefully participate in, especially because it looks like I'm just going to be reading picture books regardless. So let's jump into my priority hopefuls list for the month of April. And as you can see, if you are a returning subscriber, first of all, thank you. Let you know that we're at a little bit of a different angle. So I'm sitting at my desk facing the other direction actually so I'll just be referencing my computer so the first book on this list is a tempest of tea what I know from this is I believe it's like historical with also vampires and a tea house I think they're a tea house during the day and then are they like a blood bar during the night I don't know but be too weird is reading it so I'm looking forward to it and then I'm also have actually already started this reading what the fireflies knew by Kai Harris this is for my mother's book club the Penathene book club this is our April read and this is a historical fiction novel about takes place in the 90s and it explores black girlhood through the lens of a 10 year old almost 11 year old protagonist and this is indeed an adult novel so it's interesting how it's an adult novel but it's from the lens of a almost 11 year old and i'm really enjoying it so far then we have dysfunction junction this is a contemporary novel i think yeah i've definitely talked about this on my channel before because it was gifted to me by the publisher so it's in some book mail hall that i can't remember right now and the back quickly the back reads when three women receive an unexpected phone call that leaves them reeling they have no other choice but to reckon with a lifetime of memories they've long tried to bury only in facing the past will they find their path forward. I also, one of my goals for this year was to read more Black classics. And I need to start that. It is literally April. So I need to like actually make headway in that goal. And so I want to pick up Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. And this is a, a very short synopsis. You know what I will say about Toni Morrison books? The synopses are always so short and I really do appreciate that. So this says, Milkman Dead was born shortly after a neighborhood eccentric hurled himself off a rooftop in a vain attempt at flight. For the rest of his life, he too will be trying to fly. With this brilliantly imagined novel, Nobel Prize laureate Toni Morrison audaciously transfigures the coming of age story as she follows milkman from his rust belt city to the place of his family's origins morrison introduces an entire cast of sh strivers and seeresses and seeresses what is that liars and assassins the inhabitants of a fully realized black world yeah i'm definitely very much looking forward to this one and I haven't read a Toni Morrison novel in a moment um so I'm looking back I'm looking forward to diving back into her work then we have We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Ruffin this is the author of The American Daughters and that was one of my favorite books of March and I was looking to see like what was on his backlist because I really enjoyed his writing and it turns out I already owned this so I was like let's just keep this train going and this one is about a father and son and the father is trying to give his son a, a leg up in the world so he Oh, okay. So this father wants his son to get this medical procedure to demelanate his skin because he is born, he's a biracial black boy. He's born with this really black birthmark and the father just wants him to have thinner lips and lighter skin so that he can succeed in the world. And it is a race against time because apparently that birthmark is getting bigger and his son is getting blacker and he's just freaking out. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what Maurice Carlos Ruff and does with this type of story especially considering what he did with the American Daughters and how much I enjoyed his unique take on 
like the slave narrative so yeah I'm intrigued. Then we have The Street by Anne Petrie. I've definitely talked about this before because I think it was on either my January or February hopefuls list, but this is about a Black woman who simply is trying to grasp the American dream for herself and her son. And this takes place in 1940s Harlem. This is one of, this is actually the first Black woman to sell over a million copies. And I just I need to finally read it like it just it needs to happen then we have kindling by Tracy Chi this one was a late addition to my hopefuls list I was in the library I think a week ago and I saw it and I was like okay bet you're coming home with me for at least three weeks okay and we're gonna make it happen all I know is that this is fantasy that's all I got for you and also it's on my most anticipated list of 2024 says from best-selling and award-winning author Tracy Chi comes a gut-wrenching introspective fantasy about seven lost soldiers searching for the peace they once fought for and the future in which they're finally daring to believe. And then I also want to read Evil Eye. This was on sale for like $1.99 on the Kindle store one day so I bought it and added it and I started it oh no I didn't start it I started um a woman is no man but it's by the same author and I actually want to read both of them so once I'm finished with a woman is no man I do want to go on to evil eye which I'm trying to remember exactly what that book is about and it's funny because I put evil eye on my hopefuls list before I started a woman is no man so the like little blurb at the top says the acclaimed New York Times best-selling author of A Woman Is No Man returns with a striking exploration of the expectations of Palestinian American women, the meaning of a fulfilling life, and the ways our unresolved past affect our present. Again, I'm getting more into like the idea that I don't necessarily have to know exactly what a book is going into it if it was already on my radar. So like that's been on my radar for a while, same with a lot of these books. So I don't necessarily feel pressed to revisit the synopsis because, you know, so far past Atia has really been taking care of present and future Atia and I just need to trust her more often. Now the next book, which you probably kind of saw because I did flash it to you, is Feybound by Sarah L. Arifi. This is the same author as The Final Strife, but this is the start of a completely new story. This deals with Fey, political intrigue, and the bond between sisters, and I'm all here for it and I'm super excited about it. And again, not going to read you the synopsis because I feel like I've read this synopsis four different times for four different videos and I'm kind of sick of the fact that I have not read it yet. Then the second to last book we have is The Fetishist by Catherine Min. This is a recent addition to my collection. If you watched my birthday book haul part two, which you should definitely go watch that as well as the first part then you will have seen this book because I hold it in that video and this looks at the fetishization of Asian women by white men it's a satire and I'm just really looking forward to getting into this and gobbling it up I have I honestly for this one I have very high expectations and I'm always wary about saying that about a book because then like the chances of it letting me down just becomes astronomical but I really do have high hopes for this book and then the last book on my well actually it's not the last book y'all I'm out here lying that was not the second to last book so it's just that that was the second to last physical book that I have this is the last physical book on the priority TBR and this is the heaven and earth grocery store by James McBride this one was also hauled in that same birthday book haul or birthday haul because it was more than books and this one is historical fiction this was lauded as like the Barnes and Noble's best book of 2023 I've heard nothing of, well actually I've heard one person say that they DNF'd it because it was too slow but everyone else that I've heard talk about this has raved about it and and I'm looking forward to it. I have never read a James McBride novel and one of my goals for 2024 is to read at least two of his books. That's actually a project that I kind of want to do so I guess if all goes to plan I'll be starting that project this month in exploring the works of James McBride starting with the Heaven and Earth grocery store. Then in terms of the other 
ebooks that I want to read. I want to read A Worthy Love by A.E. Valdez. This is on my 12 friends, 12 recommendations from 12 friends that I'm trying to do. This is a romance. I don't really remember what it's about besides the fact that it's a romance. I find the cover to be absolutely just gorgeous. Okay, so we have a woman who is blindsided by the fact that her man is actually married and she's publicly humiliated because of that. She makes a series of bad decisions, including the male love interest, and then somehow they end up in the same city again and things happen. That's what I got from the very quick synopsis that I just glanced. And then the other two, actually three books on my priority list. Yeah, I know. I'm just gonna, probably going to be spending all of April just reading, hopefully, right? Is going to be The Good Ones Are Taken by Taj McCoy. I've really enjoyed Taj McCoy's works thus far, so I'm looking forward to this new book by her. Her. Um, and I believe this is a woman who is trying to date or she's on dating apps or something like that or fr friends are setting her up I don't really know and then we also have a lyric by Gray Huffington. Lyric is in the same series as Luca. Lyric is the younger sister of Luca and I'm very excited to get her love story and just dive back into the world with this community and these characters. And we also have the Hurricane Wars which I am waiting for my copy from the library and that is a that's a fantasy book that I, again, one of my most anticipated releases, but I don't remember the synopsis offhand. And then we have the books that I am like, if I get to it, I'll get to it, and that's great. I'll just put them on the screen right now. So that's gonna be The Unfortunate by JK Chukwu, The Other Princess by Denny S. Bryce, 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy, Second Chance at Rancho Lindo by Sabrina Soul. Through the Storm by Beverly Jenkins, Infomocracy by Malka Older, The Mayor of Maxwell Street by Avery Cunningham, No Reservations by Cheryl Lister, and A Right Worthy Woman by Ruth P. Watson. And that is it for my March reading recap as well as my April hopefuls list. If you enjoy this video make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell if you haven't already so you're notified every time I release a new video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments what books are you trying to get to during the month of April. Oh and also what was your favorite or least favorite read? during the month of March. And make sure to check out all of my socials, all of my other links are down below, my Amazon wish list, my Etsy shop, my Pingle Book storefront, and I will see you in another video. Bye. Showing. I ain't living for the moment. I see what's mine and I want it. Hungry like a Pac-Man. Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm Naruto with a Hanzo. Got a sharp mind like I'm Einstein. Copyright so it's all mine. Check it for me, I'm in the sky.